Uh, so Tralian, uh, you're on with Puck and Brando. What's up? How are you? Doing well. Hello. Well, here's the deal. Um, I'm getting something out of this because I haven't been able to essentially communicate the event that happened in my life about 40 years ago up until now. And I felt it incumbent upon myself, uh, not just for my sake, but for anyone else who may have had um, a similar experience or a related experience. In short, I'll try to be succinct um, so that I won't be so rhetorical. The matter has to do with a event that took place in a place called Co-op City in the Bronx. Um, the, the picture of this is uh, five football fields of buildings, about 33 floors, some Chevron, some Tricor, they called them, and then there was a tower building, which I lived in with my parents during that time period. I was in my 20s. Um, there were two hallways, one in the back, one in the front, and instead of opting for the elevator, I would uh, go through the staircase. We lived on the third floor, apartment 3J. Across from the hall of my mother was Ro Rose Stein. She was an elderly Jewish woman. She was in her 90s, and she passed away. Um, she bequeathed some artifacts to her daughter, which in turn her daughter gave some artifacts to uh, my mother. And I received a beautiful etched mirror with a reclining chair during that time period. I would go up the stairs, and I had been there for at least over a decade, so I knew every little sound in the hall, every little door that opened up, you know, on the floors ahead you know, and things of that nature were just commonplace to me. The, the winds, the howling, the whole thing, okay? Um, so on this particular occasion, there's two paranormal events that took place within five minutes of one another. And it's the reason I became an empiricist. Uh, so I'll just try to get past this. I was coming up the stairs on this, on this particular occasion. She had passed away about within less than five days and I had the artifacts in my, my room. When I got to the platform on the third floor, I heard an utterance that I had never heard before. It was unlike anything that I had ever heard, and I sensed a presence. Um, kind of dismissed it because, I mean, you know, you could say it's uh, delusional, it's, uh, it's delirious. What it, you know, outside of the human psyche, you have to say, okay, well, maybe, maybe it is a hallucination to some degree, okay? which is what I would have thought. Originally, so okay, um, I, Chalian, Chalian, um I, 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 I want to make sure that we're not like. There's a lot of questions I already have, and and I know that there's still more to the story, and I don't want you to feel like I'm interrupting. But if I don't start asking questions now, uh, then then we're we're gonna lose it. So, um, one more time, you had a presence that was you felt a presence that was saying something that was audible to you, or just a voice that you heard like in your head. Just clear that up for me. No. Um no, this is a this is an ice this is an extra um, sensory occurrence that extra happened sen audibly in the hall. Not extra the sensory, mind. but audibly, so with your ears. Yes, audibly in the hall. Yes. Okay. Okay. So I went past the door. I went into the apartment. Walked down the hall. We we lived in a two bedroom. Stein lived in a one bedroom. I went to the bathroom. Now here's where the kicker happens. Okay. I when I went into the bathroom. I flipped on the light switch, and within a moment, now just let me preface this, above the mirror, there is a fixture that all the apartments get. It's a metal fixture with a glass housing. It houses over the bulb. This uh, is in, in all the apartments, as I said. When I flipped the light switch on, within a moment, the glass housing over the bulb left the wall like a missile. It launched itself, hit the other side of the room, bounced off of my mother's wicker hamper, and I managed to grab it before it hit the floor. I went and tried to put the housing back on, but the screws were tightened down and I could not get it on. I had to loosen the screws to get the glass housing back on. Okay. That is uh, could, could you uh, feel, remind me how long ago this was? About forty years. Forty years, and do you? I have not still... it ever since. Oh, so you you, you haven't you don't live so there anymore. You don't live there. Okay. Right. So what I'm gathering here is that now, if you want to take a scientific platform to this, 
in 1995, B Bob Williams from NASA put the Hubble telescope into a central part of space. They uh, m numbered about 2,500 objects moving at superluminal speed. Now, according to Einstein, that's impossible. So what I conclude about this, and I'm not saying that this is a fact of what actually happened. Sure. But whatever that thing was, I don't know what the hell it was, but whatever it was, had to be moving beyond the speed of light in order for those screws and that glass to have passed through one another. The, the laws of physics had to break. This is my point for today because this is what, okay. this is the reason that I'm calling, because I... I'm giving this to you, point blank, for anyone who is going to get something out of this. I mean, whether you do or not, I can't say. All I know is that this is what happened, and I had felt it incumbent on me as far as mankind to report it. Okay. So, Charlie, work with me here for a second, because we're, we're going to see if we can puck this out together. Um, this was a, a, it sounds like it was either a one of or extremely rare occasion. I, I'm understanding this just kind of happened once, or is this something that frequently occurs around you? Oh my gosh, no. I hope okay. it never happens again. Okay, no, that's fine. Okay, so now the problem that we have with, with a one of is that there's really no way to go back and meaningfully investigate it, right? Um, so I validate the fact that you had this experience and this is the conclusion you come to of it. Uh, you'll have to forgive me, though, for not being able to come to the same one because really all I have to go by is what you're saying. And no, I, I don't think that you're like being intentionally deceptive, just that there's no way. way for me to go if back there and try to, to figure out life, what's, and what's you're that. And to leave this world. What should a man be conceived as if not for the preeminence of the incorporeal? Because you see, without that, there is no... Uh, justice and everything becomes futile. Okay, so that's that's a completely different can of worms. We we will we will get to the purpose of life and and the futility of no justice in a no, moment. Well, let's go back to purpose of life fits into this. Okay, well, go ahead. Go, let's shrink it down okay. to what you were talking about. Yeah, because because like with no way to go back here and meaningfully investigate this, there's no way that I'm going to gonna be able to go and say coming to a conclusion. I would never come to a conclusion because that rules out the possibilities of what might be missing from the equation. Except you did, didn't you? You you already said that that uh, the the it must have been traveling faster than the speed of light, right? And you call to evidence uh, uh, some Hubble findings about something okay. moving fast. Hypothetically, it, the only way that I can see that, because otherwise the glass would have broke and the screws would have been bent or something okay. would have been damaged, but nothing was damaged. Are you, are you leaving room for the possibility that it could have been something else? Sure. Okay. But the point I'm trying to make to you is. Whatever happened there had to break the laws of physics because there's no way that that could have happened unless something did. Now, well, the other thing that immediately comes to is, mind is that uh, it's not remembered in the, what actually happened is not remembered in the way that uh, it, it actually happened, which that seems to be a reasonable explanation I also. An insulting, I think that's an insulting statement because, first of all, I had all my senses then just as much as no, I No, no, no. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's, let's make this clear. Let's make this clear. I am not saying that you are – whoa, hold on, hold on. Stop, stop, stop. I am not at all saying that you are lacking in your faculties. Hold on. I got to talk about this. I'm not at all saying that you are lacking in your faculties. We all remember things very differently sometimes than what happened. Okay. This can happen to anyone in any circumstance. Okay. Uh, by no means. And I apologize if this is how it came across. By no means am I saying that you are deficient in your faculties. By no means was I trying to indicate that uh, you were, you were uh, 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 hallucinating or anything. Just that how you present it may, and how you remember it may not be the same as what actually happened. So I apologize. Now let's let let's let's move on from there. Okay. So let's yes. So now with all that said, hey, listen. Okay. I first of all, I don't like being spoken at. Secondly, I, my faculties are just as aware as I was back then, even more so because I'm a senior citizen, and I don't appreciate being told that maybe the story has changed in my mind. Okay, I'm telling you this point blank for your sake, just as much as everybody else that lives in this world temporarily, because when you reach the point where you're ready to leave this world, a lot of these things that you may not consider to be important will become very important to you. And that's the reason I'm speaking to you. I don't care about your atheism or people that believe in God, 
because that to me that's irrelevant. What I'm telling you now is that there is a way to live beyond this world, and that's what you need to look at. Because I don't know how old you are, but a lot of people die of a lot of different things in this world, and we have to have the justification for that somewhere down the line. Whether mankind's technology rises people back, whether we go back through time travel, whatever we do, we cannot cease to exist simply on a whim. So all I'm telling you is when that occurred to me, I realized that Rose Stein may have been that person. Maybe not. Maybe she was a ghost. Maybe not. I don't know what the hell it was. But whatever it was existed. Okay. So that's all I'm trying to purport to you. If it helps you, good. If it doesn't, well, you'll have to be the atheist until you reach that point where you'll realize that your existence is vital. Because everything that you think, everything that you feel will become non-existent if you don't think that something will happen where you will be able to survive it. Your entire life will be a waste. Well, why? thank you very why much. For, do you gather well, hold on. I think, I think Brenda had a question. Why, why would my life be a waste? Why would our lives be a waste? Because what was Brenda's question? Exist. If you go to the point where everything you've learned, everything that you know, comes to nothing, the hero and the villain come to nothing, the people who died victimized, the people who victimized them, they all come to the same non-existence. You're crazy. Okay, nothing so... Nothing possible. That's why everything mm -hmm. exists. So thank you very much for that take, and now I'm going to give you my take, whether or not you take it or leave it or not. On a long enough timeline, according to the movie Fight Club, on a long enough timeline, everybody's survival rate is zero. You're probably true. And the things that I do tomorrow may not affect the vast majority of people on this world. I remember a story about a boy who was walking down a seashore, and uh, as he's walking down, because it's low tide, he sees a lot of starfish in the tidal pools there, and uh, these fish, they will die. Um, if they're caught there. So he, he walks down the beach, takes them one by one, throws them back into the ocean so that they have a chance of survival. This man is watching this boy and saying, why are you doing this? There's hundreds of starfish on this beach alone, never mind the hundreds of beaches everywhere else in the world. How could you possibly think you're making a difference? And the boy picks up another starfish, throws it into the ocean and said, you know what? It made a difference to that one. So if you are saying that it, there is no ultimate purpose, therefore everything that I am doing is for no good reason at all, we're done. We're done having this conversation. I appreciate your input, Brenda, if you have anything else. I mean, yeah, I know. I, I just agree with you. I, I have a lot of compassion for whatever a difficulty you're having with not feeling validated in, in your experience. And at the same time to make that mean that everyone else's experience is invalid or that we, you cannot still have a positive impact. Even if, I mean, for me too, let's, I am not atheist. I do not believe it ends at the end of life, but hypothetically, if that were true, I still don't see how your life would be meaningless because if you output love, Puck, if you if you did positive things to change the world for the better, even in your small pocket of your friends, family, whatever, if you start recycling, whatever actions you take to be a really good love oriented person in this life would have ripple effects that would go on for centuries for all you know. I mean, positive impact during our life is invaluable is my belief regardless of your theology or what you believe happens in the afterlife. And this is one of the biggest places where you and I are going to really shake hands, Brenda, because yeah. there, there are a lot of, of believers who will say that what happens in this life doesn't really matter too much. It's it, This is a, a staging ground for where you're going to end up next, which is so much better and eternal on top of that, right? So this leads to all sorts of really bad decisions, like let's not bother taking care of our planet. Exactly. Right? Because because you know it, what the, the, this planet is a what is it? Uh, what's the word? Uh, fallen. This is a fallen world anyway, right? It's, it's and so who cares about what happens here? Who cares about about people who, in your opinion, are sinners? Because you know they will get their uh, the come up, and so we might as well start making it miserable for them anyway. No. Yeah, a so lot of you, a lot of yeah. theolo the theological people have that attitude, and it is a gravely harmful to society, to our planet, to everything. I was in an inter interview once where a woman kept saying, "This is not our home. This is not our home," and I was like, "So you just get to rampage around and do whatever you want because you're going somewhere else? Well, what about all the generations that are coming after you? At least care about them if you don't care to live your own life here." 
Yeah, no, you you don't even have to go to an afterlife to realize there are going to be people like we're leaving this world for someone else, right? Yeah. We're leaving a mess for someone else to clean up. And and the better I can leave my space for whoever is going to occupy it next. I, I, it, yeah, I agree. Like uh, if you look at the a timeline that extends to uh, millions of years, my actions tomorrow may not be significant, but it's going to be significant to the people who are on this planet immediately after I am. That's what I'm going to yeah. keep fighting for. And I appreciate I I, that you and I are on the same team on that. Yeah. I just, I, I, I was out of the loop, so I didn't understand the vitriol, I, except I guess it's just because you're an atheist. Oh no! Yeah, it's 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 not worth going back over. It's 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 on there. Um, I I kind of lost my pucks as soon as he suggested that uh, anything about purpose. But uh, we 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 can move on from there.